Let us tell you tales as old as time of once thriving cities. Then, nature worked against them unexpectedly. Okay, that's poetic enough. In today's video, we're covering former flourishing cities that ultimately fell prey to natural disasters. Some were defeated by wilderness or buried in the sand. Others had a terrifying end facing lava or a watery grave. So, bring out your tourist hats and get ready to embark on an adventure to ancient times. The first place on our list is Timgad, Algeria. It takes us into the Algerian deserts a thousand years ago. Romans also used to call it Thamugas or Thamugadi. Timgad was founded by Emperor Tarjan around 100 AD. We've heard that the city is a glorious example of Roman town planning. It has a huge amphitheater, a 12 meter high arch called the Trons Arch, and even a public library. Yes, the ancient metropolis was an important economic and trade center, yada yada, but Romans had a sassy purpose for it. It was built to flaunt the mighty Roman power to indigenous tribes. As for the beauty, the sophisticated city had limestone paved streets, houses decked with vibrant mosaics, intricate columns, and 14 exquisitely built public baths. Now, that's a good life. However, the military town drew attacks and was ransacked by Berber tribes. Ultimately, the 8th century Arab invasion proved to be the final nail in its coffin. From there on, it rested beneath the sand of the Sahara Desert, waiting to be discovered. Next up, Ephesus, Turkey. The Greco-Roman city of Ephesus has a rich, long-standing history. Listen to this. Folk tale says it's founded by the mighty female Amazon warriors. Hooray for girl power! Since the Bronze Age, this city faced waves of conquerors like the Sumerians, Alexander the Great, and the Romans. While the attacks undoubtedly caused damage, the diverse civilizations gave it heaps of architectural beauty. Ephesus is actually known as the world's greatest outdoor museum. It had the luxurious terrace houses for the rich and a stunning marble building, the Library of Celsus. The library was decorated with elegant relief sculptures of Greek gods. Not to forget the massive Temple of Artemis ruins, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In this ancient port city, you could bask in the warm sunshine, surrounded by the serene Mediterranean Sea and lush greens. Sounds heavenly. Being the last rumored home of the Virgin Mary increased its importance, so it suffered various raids and even an earthquake. At long last, it ceased to function in the Middle Ages. Now, we're in Angkor, Cambodia. While most ancient places got buried under land, Angkor forfeited to wild vines. The forest took it over and today gives the place a hauntingly beautiful look. Hear this, the French explorer, Henri Maho, who rediscovered it, wrote it was grander than anything left to us by Greece or Rome. Now that's saying something, because we've had marvelous Greco-Roman architectures. The city has a rich Hindu and Buddhist history, especially related to the Angkor Wat temple. Here's a fun fact, it's the largest religious monument in the world. The reflection of the massive structure in the nearby lake makes for a stunning capture. Speaking of lakes, it was a water city, literally. Angkor is known as the hydraulic city of the Khmer civilization. Water didn't only bless lands, it was also a symbol of the king's power. Sadly, the vast canal network ultimately led to its demise. First, the jungle town faced a long drought. Then, its people probably prayed for too much rain because a catastrophic monsoon fell upon them, leading to floods. The outcome was so significant, it changed the course of the Seam Rip River. Finally, the city perished and wilderness took over. Moving on, Leptis Magna in Libya. Leptis Magna rests in present-day Libya and is known as the jewel of the Roman Empire. Now, this was a wealthy city thanks to the olive oil production. That's why it was highly sophisticated and embellished. Adding to that, it was also the birthplace of Septimus Severus. The name seems awfully familiar to Snape and his bloody curse, doesn't it? Anyway, when Severus became emperor, he had to make it the most beautiful city of the empire. That title attracted aristocrats here like a bee to nectar. They built stunning marble villas here, enhancing the beauty even more. Plentiful markets, the Grand Augustan Theatre, and imposing stone-carved structures hint at it being a thriving city. Unfortunately, as the Romans' control weakened in the 4th century, so did Leptis Magna. Frequent raids from Berbers devastated it, and its economy suffered. Soon, it became a forgotten city, and sand buried it to be found in the 20th century. The next city is Troy, in modern-day Turkey. You might immediately perk up by the name of Troy. Yep, it's the same city, with legends of the Trojan War involving a big wooden horse. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that didn't really happen. The city of Troy had been a myth for a long time. It was mentioned in Homer's poem Iliad. That's the guy you should catch for spreading the horse 
rumors. At first, scholars took the poem as literal truth. Later, scholars dismissed it altogether as mere fiction. When a 19th century German businessman, Heinrich Schleimann, went to find Troy and trashed the site, the world finally believed it existed. Side note, the city may be real, but the war was fictional. It was found in nine layers, with settlements built one on the other. Troy is the truly buried city on our list. The fortress town shows ruins of citadels and defensive walls, but you gotta entertain yourself too. For that, they had concert halls and marketplaces. Schleiman also discovered previous jewelry from the site, some displayed in the 2018 Troy Museum. During the Middle Ages, this UNESCO World Heritage Site fell into decline and gradually got buried, arriving at Pompeii, Italy. Now, prepare to be disturbed, because Pompeii is a city which was destroyed by a volcano in minutes. On the bright side, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius also preserved the city in time. When the disaster hit, the fortunate ones left it, and the place was forgotten until the 18th century excavation. Today, you can roam its stone-carved streets and marvel at its paintings, and the completely intact buildings. It'll look like just another classic European town if you forget the gory history. Lost for 1700 years, this Roman city even has naughty graffiti our streets have. But seriously, it has some of the best preserved artwork in the world. Romans loved outdoor living, which explains the kaleidoscopic murals depicting their daily life. Also, the rooms were claustrophobic due to the lack of windows. Romans employed art to give a sense of more space in them, using art functionally and aesthetically. Now that's smart. Pompeii was a popular resort town for the rich class, like the Hamptons to New York. So you better believe it was one gorgeous city. If it weren't taken off guard by the volcano, it would have been a popular Italian city like neighboring Naples. Up next, we have Sigiria, Sri Lanka. If you head into Asia and ask about Sigiria, you'll find it's a fortress. However, it was developed into a complex city and palace during King Kashyapa's reign, that's between 477 and 499 AD. Its most unique thing is the location. Sigiria is built over a huge rock slash hill surrounded by a lush green forest. What's more, the king formed the gates of his new capital in the shape of a massive lion. That's why the hill is called the Lion Rock. That's pretty secure, and it had to be because the king cruelly murdered his father for the throne. It's quite the juicy story, because his brother, the rightful heir, returned for revenge and ultimately defeated Kashyapa. Moving on from the beautiful frescoes that decorate the rock walls, they're so vibrant that when a British officer first discovered the site, he thought they were just painted. In its prime, the city had gorgeous gardens and pools. We've heard through the grapevine that a mirrored wall here used to be polished so well that the king could see his reflection in it. The mythical city was abandoned after the king's death, and bushes covered most of the architecture. Today, it's the best preserved example of ancient urban planning. An urban town in a forest? Wow! And finally, Herakleon, Egypt. At our last destination, we set anchor in an underwater city on our voyage in time. Forget the mythical Atlantis that's never even been found. Check out Thonis Herakleon in the Nile Delta. A little birdie told us this city grew where Hercules first set foot into Egyptian land. Now, these may be mere legends. We actually don't know more about the city. According to an estimate, archaeologists think it's been underwater for a long time, since the 8th century. You can praise modern sonar technology that led us to discover numerous boats and even more anchors. More exciting finds included treasures such as jewelry and temple worship supplies. We know that Egyptian temples housed the most precious items. The largest things discovered were the towering 18-foot-long granite statues of Egyptian gods. Imagine their grandeur on land. All this gives a general idea of how prosperous and gorgeous this place must have been. So, how did it enter its watery downfall? Well, it literally fell. The soil it was built on had loads of clay. Add in the frequent tidal flooding or earthquakes, it slowly slid to the ocean floor. All this talk of magnificent cities that are now ruined is getting depressing. So, that's a wrap. Which city amazed you most? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next one.